Okay, so I'm going to go here, then here, then here. Okay, and I'll get through as much as I can. Um, for Lewis, Lewis Vesper hybridization, I'll kind of do those all sort of all together. Uh, I'm going to do sort of a classic example uh, first, and maybe I'll do a hard example, but let's do a classic example. Carbonate would be a good one. Uh, we're going to do everything. Lewis structure, Vesper, shape, angles, bond order, oxidation state, hybridization, just every possible thing we can think of, okay? So you can see a full problem. All right, so uh, let me write it down. We'll go Lewis. We'll go shape, which is Vesper. We'll do the angles. We'll do hybridization. We'll do oxidation state. We'll do formal charge. Uh, resonance, if there is any. Bond order. Uh, did I say hybridization? I did. There might be more. That's all I can think of at the moment. <coughs> Polarity, that's a good one. Okay. All right. So let's just make our way through these. Lewis structure first. I start with the valence electrons. By the way, uh, students from other classes, uh, Ochoa, folks here? Uh, oh, some of you, okay, welcome. Uh, Tobadakis, folks? And, uh, and I think there's Gulikar, is that right? Oh, hey, wow, they all came out of nowhere, cool. Welcome to my class. All right, 18 and 24. So I may solve these differently than you do, that's totally fine. Some, a lot of these problems in this class can be solved multiple ways. This is how I do this. I draw the skeleton first, so the carbon with three oxygens surrounded by it, and then I put in uh, the bonds for the skeleton, so just the bare bones of it. This, now I've used each uh, bond is two electrons, two, four, six of 24. So six of 24. Then I go octets on the out, outermost <coughs> atoms, so 6, 8, 10, 12, that has an octet, 14, 16, 18, that has an octet, uh, 20, 22, 24, that has an octet. The problem is the center carbon doesn't have an octet, and uh, carbons have, basically have to have octets in this class. So you can fix that by picking any lone pair at random and making it a double bond instead. So you're moving it over to a double bond position. Because this has a charge, really we want to put brackets around this and a two minus charge if you were asked to draw it. Okay, so that's the Lewis structure. Let's put in the formal charges to make sure they're okay. Formal charge of that oxygen. Okay, let me ask first. Do you want to, me to tell you how to get the formal charge or you just want me to tell you the answer? Tell us, okay, my style may likely be different than your instructor, so FYI. Okay, what do you get for this one? Then I'll tell you how I got it. Zero, that's right. You find the column number in the periodic table behind me, it's in column 6A, or 6, and you count the number of what I call items around it, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, it's zero. Carbon is? Zero, because it's in column 4, and you count 1, 2, 3, 4. So 4 and 4, it's a match, so zero. Uh, this oxygen is minus one because it's in column six up there on the periodic table and you count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, it's one over. Too many negatives. Uh, this one also is identical, so it's a minus one. Uh, you count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So notice the sum of the formal charges equals the overall charge. Okay, uh, what else did we want to do? Uh, let's do shape next. Uh, what atom do I do shape for? Atom or atoms? Central. Central only, which is carbon in this case. So the electron geometry is? Not at all touching people, though. Good, yeah. That could be tricky. Make sure you're counting groups. Double bond, single bond, single bond. Three groups. This is trigonal planar. So that could be tricky. Make sure you do the count correctly. Molecular geometry. Same. There's no lone pairs. So that means the bond angle is? 120. We're only asking for ideal bond angles, which would be 120 in this case. Uh, so we've got shape and bond angles. Uh, I'll say something else about bond angles in a bit. Okay, 
This also has resonance structures, which is denoted by the double-headed arrow here. You can take the double bond from the other side, and you'd have this resonance structure, 2 minus, or uh, you can take the double a bond from the bottom oxygen like this. Now, if we asked you to draw all the reasonable resonance structures, you would want to put brackets, the 2 minus, and you'd want to add all the formal charges. You don't need to write the zero, I guess unless your instructor has told you to, but typically you don't. Uh, you just write anything that's non-zero as far as formal charges. All right, so those are all the resonance structures. Uh, what else did I want to do? Let's do the actual shape. So it is trigonal planar. I haven't drawn the actual shape yet. In case they ask you to, you would draw uh, something with 120 degree bond angles that kind of look like a triangle. So if you wanted to draw the shape, you'd draw something like this. I'm only drawing one here. You could draw, you know, all the resonance structures, but that would be to the correct shape. It's a trigonal planar now. All right, so we've got that. What else did I want to do? Hybridization. What's the hybridization of, what atom do we do hybridization for? The central atom, the carbon. So that would be sp, Two, yeah, there's three groups. So hybridization and shape is both based on the group count. All right, uh, let's do uh, polarity, I suppose. Would this be polar or nonpolar? Yeah, this one's a little weird. Uh, I would generally say nonpolar. Sometimes people get uh, their underwear all in a bunch because of the charge of the species. So that uh, could cause a problem. But if, if it was neutral, it would definitely be a non-polar. Okay, uh, that's polarity. Ooh, what else would we do? Oxidation state. What's the oxidation state of oxygen? Negative two. Yeah, it's pretty often negative two, except in some a couple uh, rare circumstances. So then carbon must be. Plus something, that's right. The plus part is correct. I'd go four. Four minus three times two, uh, six will give a negative two overall charge. So you can see how the oxidation state and the formal charges are not the same. They're based on a different definition. Finally, let's do the bond order. Uh, I'll pick uh, a bond for us to do it for. I wouldn't have to do this if it was the test, but just since to keep us kind of normal here. What's the bond order for that one that I just circled? You may think it's one, but it's actually not one. To get the bond order, you have to count for all resonance structures. So that means you're counting that one, the average of these three. Yeah, so it'd be one plus two plus one divided by three. Does this sound like something your instructor didn't cover? Yes. Ooh, that's unfortunate. Good UK. <laughs> Okay, it'd be four thirds of one and a third. Now, the bond order in the MO diagram is calculated differently. Also, I'll say if there was no resonance structure, you just have to take the structure as is and it would have been one. But when there is resonance, you need to take the average of what it goes through through all bonds of that type. You'll see this is not an unusual uh, question. All right. I did all types. Let me give you a moment to think and see if you have any questions for me before I go on to the next topic. Uh, I might say a couple more things about this though. Right. Any questions for me? This is a classic type of question. Question that I was just asked, why did I choose that bond? Random, you can pick the one on the bottom, you're still gonna get the same answer. Oh yeah, I forgot something, that's a good reminder. There's one other thing we could have asked you. Count the sigma and the pi bonds. Yeah, I'm excited too. Okay, how many pi bonds? 
One, there's one double bond. How many sigmas? Three. Three, because there's three bonds total. Okay, uh, let's do one harder version of the sigma pi hybridization. <coughs> if there's, if I got most of your questions down. So make sure you can do questions like this for basically any molecule. Any molecule you've seen in class, or species you've seen in class, make sure you can do all that stuff that I, I listed here at the top. All right, uh, let's do a harder version of a uh, sigma pi bond something or another. Is sigma the total amount of bonds? Yes, definitely. Okay, if you learned something different, I don't know what to say about that, but this is the truth. Are you double counting the bonds? No, not at all, because a double bond is made out of two bonds, a sigma and a pi. If it was a triple bond to be a sigma and two pi, so three types of bonds. So you're, you're looking at the same bond twice, but you're, you're counting different bonds. Yes. Oh, bond angles. Um, okay, let me say something about the bond angles. La, la. Let's say you have this molecule. I'm not putting in the lone pairs just for this example. Uh, first, what's the shape if you have that molecule? Trigonal, bipyramidal. What's the bond angle or angles? Now, yeah, if you're in my class, I mean, I usually just say this, but some other instructors might add the 180. I don't like adding 180 because I don't write 360 or 270 or 1080 or whatever. I mean, they're all multiples as far as I'm concerned. But your instructor might add that one. If, if you're in my class, I don't really care if that one's there. I'm not adding 240 either. Okay, but uh, those would be the bond angles. So sometimes some instructors like that 80 there. Okay, now that was not the example I wanted to do though. <laughs> uh, yes. Let's see. Oh. Okay. Oh yes. Wow, how am I thinking of this? Oh my gosh, I'm genius. Okay. Alright. I wanna know the total number of sigma and pi bonds. I also will want to know the hybridization of every atom that is relevant. Uh, I'm going to give you a 10 second head start while I think about what problem I'm going to do after this. If you want a head start on me. Sigma, pi bonds, and all the hybridization. Okay, yeah, so what we'll do next. Okay, I also have to count. How many pi bonds are you counting? I'm counting three, because there's three double bonds. Okay. Sigmas. Oh gosh, give me a second here. I'm getting around, I'm getting in the teens. Okay, every carbon has how many bonds? Four. So you better draw in those hydrogens. Oh yeah, that's what I'm saying too. Does this sound like something your instructor didn't cover? You are lucky you came tonight. Okay. Uh, okay, so. Uh, is it 17? Did I count right? About 17, somewhere around there. Yeah, something like that. Okay, uh, let's do the hybridization now. I'm going to just point with my pen and say the answer. Okay, that carbon, SP2. SP2, that carbon right there. Let's zoom in just so things are easy to see here. Okay, that carbon also SP2. Okay, let's go to the next one. That one, that carbon. SP2. There's three groups. Single, single, double. Okay, okay. <laughs> wow. No, it's okay. I am glad you are here. Hybridization uh, uh, and group count. This is good. This is good. You don't want to learn this during the final. 
right? Okay. <laughs> Sorry, only right or zoom with the, not twice. Okay. Cool. Uh, so the group count, you can also go five and six. So SP3D, SP3D2. Okay. So uh, this has three groups, one, two, three. So that's why it's SP2. All right. How about this carbon right there? SP2 and same with that one above it. Both SP2 both have three groups. How about both of these carbons right here? SP3, they both have four groups, or four single bonds in this case. All right, how about, uh, ooh, I, it's, I think it's 18. Okay, cool, somebody said 19. I, okay, it's at least 18, we'll see. Uh, what's a, uh, this has to have a hydrogen here. Okay. What is the hybridization of this nitrogen? It's not sp2, though it looks like it. Why not? Yeah, you got drawing all the lone pairs that are missing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, we're having a lot of excitement tonight. So it's actually sp3. I don't, I don't know if I'm making you happy or mad. It's sp3, and this oxygen is also sp3. has four groups. Any questions about any of those atoms? You can discuss amongst yourself while I answer some questions. Yeah. Why is the one pair Yeah, I'll answer that for everybody. Yes. I'll answer that for everybody. Uh, over here, can you yell the kernel out? How do I know it left hydrogen to the lower? the same question. Uh, how do you know if it's hydrogen for lone pairs or whatever? Uh, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, neon. Uh, lone pairs, zero, one, two, three, four. It just follows the pattern according to the periodic table. So I know that the carbons don't have any lone pairs. I know that oxygens always have two when the formal charge is zero. And nitrogen's always have one when the formal charge is zero. If we were giving you this, uh, we would have drawn this hydrogen I drew in black right there. So you wouldn't have had to figure that out, though it's not a stretch, but in 2A we wouldn't. Uh, you would have to know the blue hydrogens. You would have to know that the missing things on the carbons, th those are hydrogens. That you would have to have known. Okay, uh, did, I think I answered your questions for sure. Did I kind of get yours? Okay. All right, so make sure you can do all that hybridization and a sigma pi bonds. Uh, was there any other hydrogens I missed that you saw? Yes? Okay. If the formal, uh, the, is, will oxygen always have two lone pairs? If the formal charge is zero, yes, always. So this is formal charge equals zero, which is in the most case for organics, which it is, this is. Uh, so yeah, so this is the pattern. If a formal charge is not zero, it's a different pattern. This is appendix two of the Lewis structure chapter if you're in my class. Yeah. Okay. Next, MO. MO. Uh, one volunteer. Volunteer? Yeah, Adam. Pick an Adam. You're not Adam, I know. But. Uh, I, nitrogen, good one. Okay, uh, another volunteer. Charge. Yes. Uh, I will not accept a negative. Okay, I will accept a positive. Yes. Uh, getting higher than, larger than the absolute value of two is just not practical for these questions. So, zero, one, negative one, plus uh, two, or minus two are within reason. Uh, there are some charges that don't work for certain atoms. 
Yeah, so that's why I told you not to give me the negative, but positive two works. How do you do the MO diagram for this? Okay, this will take me about two thirds of a page to draw, okay? Energy, uh, here's what I do. Your instructor may or may not be different. I know Topodakis has a little, got a little different vibe on this, in, and in general. Five, you have a different vibe, I have a different vibe. Okay. All right. Uh, you can, I'm going to explain the way I do this first. Uh, you can put a plus one here and plus one. The sum of the charges of the atoms have to equal the molecule. Or, or, you could put a neutral and a two plus. That's probably what I'm going to do. Or you could put a two plus and a neutral. Doesn't matter if you're in my class. I have noticed, Topodakis, and I don't know about the other instructors because they haven't been around as long, uh, that Topodakis tends to like to just put neutral here and then recount the atom count in the middle. Just do whatever he told you if, he's, if you're in his class. Uh, but for me, uh, I'm putting, I'm distributing the charge accordingly. So the sum of these charges have to equal the molecular charge. Okay. All right, so then what I do, this is not necessary, so I'll do it in a different color. I like to put the electron configuration underneath. 2s2, 2p3, I think, yep. And this is 1s2, 2s2, 2p1, because it has a two plus charge. Okay, so that's not necessary, but I think it's helpful. Okay, now we'll go back to necessary. And now I'm also gonna put a line here, like this. I will include the core electrons below this line, but you don't need them, okay? You only need the valence. So what I draw below this line is also unnecessary. I'll just do it for completeness. 1s, there's a 2s level, and then there's a 2p level. And then same over on the other side, a 1s, you won't need that uh, for the final. You only need the valence, and a 2s, and a 2p, like that. Okay. okay, you can fill in the electrons as well. I'll do that in a different color. 1s2, 2s2, 2p. Have to be filled out like this. They have to be unpaired. That's, uh, what is that? Hun's rule, I believe. 1s2, 2s2, 2p1. Okay. Now, we draw the middle. The middle is the molecular orbitals. The outside is called the atomic orbital. So S, uh, P, D, F, those are atomic orbitals. The middle, the sigma and pi that you learned, are the molecular orbitals. Let's put those in the center. Every bond has how many parts, my class? Two. That's the bonding and antibonding. That's right. So bonding is low energy, antibonding is high energy. You connect these with beautiful the little dots or dashes. Like this, sigma 1s, sigma 1s star. Okay, uh, same for the 2s, it'll look pretty much the same. Actually, the way I'm drawing it, exactly the same. Like that, it'll have a low energy bonding part. Sigma 2s though, because it comes from the 2s. And sigma 2s star, star meaning antibonding. Antibonding is always the higher energy. Then, uh, uh, for the P's, there's always two choices. It depends what the atom is, whether it's oxygen or to the right on the periodic table, or nitrogen and to the left on the periodic table. This one's nitrogen. You always go by the atom, not the electron count. And so I'm about to draw this. Actually, this is the diagram I am drawing above the green line. So it's going to be a pattern of two, one, two, one is what you're gonna see me draw. So I will replicate that. This is also in my reader and in the textbook somewhere in this chapter 14. So you'll see me draw the pattern, two, one, and then above the midline, two, one. Dot, 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 dot. Connect it, beautification by dots or dashes, like that. There we go. The last thing I do is fill in the electrons. So let's do that. I do it uh, a set of orbitals at a time. So I do each set separately. This bottom set that you wouldn't have to draw on the test would have two and two. 
or a total of four. One, watch my pen if you don't know how to fill these in. Two, now it's filled. Uh, you have both spins up and down. So now you go here, three and then four. Next set, two and two again, so a total of four. I'm going to do the exact same thing. It'll look exactly the same, except it's two X. One, two, three, and four. Now for the top, uh, we have different levels here, so make sure you do it correctly. You have a three and a one, or a total of four, to go in the middle. So I'm going to go one, and then unpaired. You always unpair when possible when they're the same energy level. And then three and four paired. If I had a fifth, it would go up here. Five and six would go up here if I had them. And then seven, eight, nine, and ten would go here where my pen is. And Eleven, twelve would go here if I had them. All right, that's uh, the final diagram. There's two additional things we'll discuss. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Oh, I didn't label the names. Excellent. Thank you. The names are pi to p. Sigma to P, Pi to P star, and Sigma to P star. So you're right, the question was, uh, like, what about the two lines? When you see two lines, that's definitely a Pi in our class, Chem 2A. If you see one line all by itself, that's going to be a Sigma. That's true in our class, it'll get more intricate if you want from other classes. So there's four electrons in the Pi to P, none in the other levels. Good, appreciate that. The, uh, okay, so yes. Do we need to name? Do you need to put, uh, do you need to put like sigma and pi, even if there's no electrons? Definitely. We want all molecular orbital energy levels, is what you're talking about, labeled. So yes, put all the sigmas and all the pi's, you would be definitely dot points if you did not, yes. Uh, a MO diagram between which one it is, it's based on the atom you have. So how do you tell what 2P diagram to draw? It's based on the atoms. Uh, if you're in my class, that's in the reader in this section, both, both types. I just drew this. This is nitrogen or to the left on the periodic table. And if it's oxygen or to the right, it's this. The difference is the sigma 2p and pi 2p energy levels right here. They're flipped. That is the only difference as far as you're concerned. Okay? All right. I'm going to go back to the problem we're working on. A uh, question we would ask you, is this para or diamagnetic? Diamagnetic, you look at the center, if everything is paired, it's dia, di for two. Okay, the other thing we would ask you is the bond order. Uh, you could calculate the bond order from everything. The way I do it is just look at the uppermost diagram. So for my class who's used to that, what's the first number here? Four minus zero, so this is actually a double bond, two. So this is a different method of calculating bond order than you would see from Lewis. If you're wondering where these numbers come from, the four comes from here, and the zero comes from here. Do not draw these circles and lines on your test, okay? We would, we would not know what the heck you're talking about. Okay, I'm just showing you where the numbers count comes from. Okay, any last questions on MO that doesn't get easier or harder? It's just this, okay? So these are, this is classic question right here. To make up a molecules with your friends. Yes. Do you have to draw these? A dot or a dash? You can choose. If you don't like my dots, you can make dashes. That's fine. But it has to be there. Uh, you'll see in some textbooks it's not there, uh, for sure. But in some textbooks they don't include the atomic orbital. But we're doing all of this, so we want to see that. You could put a box, though, instead of a line. That's common. Okay. okay, three people with questions. First, the two who are sitting next to each other. I oh, can't hear you at all, though. Yeah. There's no anti-bonds. Are you in my class or a different class? Uh, so why are there anti-bonds like uh, at the high, the star levels? Why do those exist at all? Correct. For the 2P, 
Well, for the two, why are there bonds and antibonds? There are for every level. The 2s has a sigma 2s and a sigma 2s star. The 2p has three bonding, sigma and pi bonding, and sigma and pi antibonding. So they always have an equal number of bonding and antibonding. That's because every bond has two parts, the bond and the antibond. So you have to have an equal number on both sides. If you're wondering conceptually why that happens, that's when I drew that little diagram of the bonding part plus the anti-bonding part. That's where that came from. So it's, chap it's the first page of that chapter. Yes. Why are there no electrons there? If that's your question, it's because I ran out of electrons. Yeah, so if that was your question, I ran out of electrons, that's why there's not a fifth or sixth electron. You gotta go from lowest to highest always. Yes. If, uh, let me stop you right there. If you had something like lithium and fluorine, you would not in this class because we're doing homonuclear, same with this. Yes. How did I know it's diamagnetic? It's because I have all paired electrons in the molecular orbitals. Molecular orbitals are the ones in the middle, the sigma and pi. So you do not count the atomic orbitals on the outside. Diamagnetic means they're all paired. Paramagnetic means there's at least one unpaired electron. Okay, next. Uh, this will have to be the last question, we'll have to move on. Yes. Why did I calculate the bond order? I did the bond order differently than the Lewis structure. How did I do it in the Lewis structure? You just, if there's no resonance, you just li literally look at the bond. One means single, two means double, three means triple. If there is resonance, you take the average of all those, which we did. It was, in the example we did, carbonate, two were singles and one was double. Okay, I have to go on, otherwise I'm not finishing, or not even getting close. Okay, trends, I will summarize very quickly, that's easy. Know this, from my reader, page 95, those are all the trends. So you got electronegativity, ionization energy, electron affinity, radius, uh, those are the main ones. So just know which direction they increase and which direction they decrease. So if we give you any two atoms, you could say, oh, that has a larger radius, for example. So if I said fluorine and oxygen, which is the larger radius, you would say oxygen, because radius increases to the left and down. <laughs> 